Good morning, and thank you for having me. Now, Mr. Chuku, please perhaps help Nigerians understand why they need to pay uh, this levy to ensure that their funds are secure. Because uh, like our other guest was mentioning, there are several implications to this, and the timing doesn't seem right. We're looking to uh, spread the net for the unbanked so that uh, they can come into the net of the bank. But uh, so many of them are now beginning to think otherwise. So perhaps you need to help us uh, help Nigerians better understand the decision of government. Um, well, let me still start by on a lighter note. I'm also still trying to wrap my head uh, around the reasons why the government must impose taxes on transactions. Um, in the, in the, with, on the pretext that is for us to secure the cyberspace. The government has a primary responsibility to provide security, be it physical security, homeland security, standard security, and including securing the cyberspace. Why we pay taxes is because we are all contributing to those security and other government functions. So if you have to get individuals and business to pay taxes on their transactions volume, not on their profits, what we basically do is that you, you take away part of their operating capital in the cost in the name of tax, and you actually frustrate the process of intermediation, process of business transactions. The concept of government is that they take from the surplus units, um, which is the concept of progressive tax. You tax those who are earning more, and then you tax less of those who are earning less. Uh, but what we have now is a, a flat tax. So if I, as a poor man, all the money I have is one million naira, and I need to move the money to you, they will take 0.5% of that one million naira. They are not asking me if what I'm paying you is a profit or if I'm buying a, 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 an item from you. And then you want to pay your, your supplier, they take another 0.5%. And what happens is that each and every one of us will have to mark up this 0.5% on our cost, mm -hmm. and then transfer it to the next person, and the next person, and the next person. By the time it moves 10 places, you already have 5% deducted, mm -hmm. or added to the cost of that business. So eventually, you're going to be passing additional burden on the consumers. That is not based on consumption. It's just based on transaction flow. So I think it's a very wrong tax for anybody to think of. So that's why I say, I'm also still struggling to wrap my head around why the government would impose a tax of 0.5%. Let me tell you, most low margin business do not earn 0.5% profit on their transactions. Mm. So if you impose 0.5% on transactions, they are paying taxes not from their profit, but they are paying taxes based on their capital. By the time they continue that velocity of circulation and move their monies around to buy goods and sell goods, they will end up in the next one year eroding their entire capital. Mm. Right, just to uh, let me tell you, if, if you have um, one million naira in your account, you're not a poor man. <laughs> yes. But then if you look at the um, number two on the list of exemptions in Appendix, appendix 1 of the memo, it excludes um, salary payment from the application of this deduction. And my question is, how do you think you know, this will be adapted to suit informal sector workers? Because uh, you know, those who earn wages and not salaries. Is that to say that, especially for a country that has a huge percentage of its populace in the informal sector, how do you think they can go about, about this? Is that to say that you know, if you want to do transactions, you know, the other hand too, you just have to put the narration, uh, security, uh, cyber security levy, etc. It's not even at your discretion. It's basically at the bank's discretion. Um, if I transfer money to you, what basically, where they, they can effectively exclude um, uh, salaries is because salaries are paid as lump sum payment from um, um, dis distribution from uh, institutions or employers to their employees. So salary payments can be taxed and a, a proper code used to exempt it. But for the man who is selling a handkerchief on, a, in, on in Maryland, on the road in Maryland, and who goes to buy uh, the handkerchief uh, from somebody, and if he has to do a transfer from his account to the person who supplies him handkerchief, um, he, he, there's no way he will tag it a salary uh, or wage. So it's a transaction uh, payment, and they will slam 0.5% on it. But look at that man who sells five hanky in a day, and you are taking tax of 0.5% on every payment he pay makes. How do you think, what would you think happened to his life, livelihood? What level of capital do you think he has? 
that you're taking 0.5%. Do you think you make 0.5% profit on each of those hanky sales? So that's what, we're, that's what we're going to. But beyond that, even for rich people, even people look like you and you and those of you who are very rich, the concept that you'll take 0.5% from your transactions flow is that in the next one year, your capital will be loaded unless you are in a business that has a huge margin. And for you to safeguard yourself from that, you have to begin to mark up. And today, we don't have, Nigerians don't have money to pay for anything. They don't have money to live basic, to buy basic things of life. My colleague David was talking about inflation rates at about 3.2% in March, food inflation at 40%, and it, it cannot exempt food items. So if I want to buy five tubers of yam, and the person who is selling the five tubers of yam in the market says, okay, transfer to my account. As I make that payment to the person's account, they will take 0.5% from it. Mm. And this guy who retails uh, yam in uh, my 12, we have to pay somebody who supplies yam. Maybe now he has to pay like 5 million to the person who supplies yam to him. They take another 25,000 from it. All right. All right. Johnson Chukun, let me stay with you because we have limited time now. Uh, the government is saying that this matter is to tackle... Uh, crimes and terrorism, and that uh, Nigeria actually lost about 273 billion naira to cybercrime in about in the year 2002, and we have seen that increase over the year. So, what would you proffer to government now if you are saying that uh, this is not healthy for us at this time? What I would say, government, to do is that. They need to recognize one thing. Let me talk from a broader perspective before I get to the narrow, uh, to the uh, specifics of your question. Tax is a leakage in any economy. And subsidy is an injection. When you take tax from an economy, you deduct from the pros uh, prospect of that economy growing. One of the things they use to slow down the economy that is, is heated up is to increase taxes so that you slow down the economy. Our economy is struggling. So what we should be focusing on, how do we create incentives to grow the economy so that we're increasing the pie? And then when we tax the pie, we will now get a larger volume. Remember, we have a proof of concept in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai in particular. When Dubai started attracting investors into their country, they had a zero tax uh, policy. There was no value added tax. There was no sales tax. All the taxes were zero, and people were flooding into Dubai. And then they began to attract businesses, including technology-driven businesses. And it, eventually, Dubai had become a big economy, a large economy. And what have they done? They have introduced those taxes. So they are extracting value on a larger base. All right. That's what they've got to focus on. All right, our time is up, but we must thank you, gentlemen, public finance.